So this is another video on sketching graphs and we're going to talk about shapes of important graphs you need to know for the uh, A-Level Maths Core 1 module under Edexcel. Of course it can work for other syllabi like you know OCR or you know, AQA um, but those modules, are, they teach the same things but in a different order so it will be useful for a different module. Anyway, so here are the three uh, types of graphs you need to know. Quadratic graphs, basically something with a squared in it. Cubic graphs, something with a power 3. The highest power is a power 3 so you can have squared in it as well but the highest power is 3 just like the highest power over here has to be 2 for it to be a quadratic graph and what is called a reciprocal graph reciprocal means to turn upside down and this is basically uh, a 1 over x or k over x graph so that's why it's called a reciprocal graph now there's a special version of the cubic graph you might notice here the dotted graph here uh, which looks a bit different to this cubic graph. Let me start again. <coughs> there we go. So this is another video on sketching graphs which is all about drawing the rough shape of certain graphs. Now I've already made a quick video about what sketching graphs means precisely things like intercepts and stuff like that uh, so I'm going to not repeat that and talk about these three graphs that you need to know the rough shape of. I'll roughly tell you what the three graphs are. You've got a quadratic graph, i.e. a graph with uh, a power 2 which is the highest power in the equation for that graph. Uh, this is a cubic graph so the highest power in this is a 3 and you've got a reciprocal graph which looks like this, something, some number over x. Um, you could even have more variations on that but I'm not going to go into too many variations of this because that's another video uh, that I'll make under this topic sketching graphs on my website sigmas.wordpress.com uh, and so let's go into detail into each of these graphs now so you've got a quadratic graph there are some important things you need to know about it well first of all it's got one hump okay so uh, the proper word that you should know for that is a vertice uh, it's like a corner but it's not a very pointy corner is it so that's the vertice of this graph it's only got one vertice as opposed to a cubic graph which ha usually has two vertices but I'll talk about cubic graphs in a minute another thing you need to know about quadratic graphs is that they are symmetrical so if you make a vertical line here at this vertex uh, basically it will be symmetrical about that that's vertical line so this side is the same as this side of the vertex and finally what you also should know is that one important basic quadratic graph is the plane y equals x squared graph uh, so and that has a vertex at 0 0 at the origin of the axes now just to be really clear just in case it's not that clear uh, this could be y equals any number x squared plus any number x plus c where a and b and c are just numbers, plain numbers or constants is the proper word for it. They're numbers that don't change where x and y are variables because they produce the various coordinates on this graph. Okay. So as x changes you work out what this is and you uh, whatever that comes to be that makes y. So if x is 1 you get a certain value for y. If x is 2 you get another value for y. It keeps changing. Uh, right so let's move to cubic graphs. This is a general form of a cubic graph. As I said the highest power has to be 3. This is a general look for a cubic graph. It has two humps or two vertices. The proper word is vertex or vertices. Vertices is plural for vertex. Uh, and uh, the, the only thing that makes an exception to that look of two humps is the plain y equals x cubed graph. 
okay, that fits into this category of AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D, uh, where Y equals X cubed is where A is 1, B is 0, C is 0, and D is 0. So it does fit into that category. And again, of course, A, B, and C, D, and D, sorry, are all plain numbers or constants numbers that don't change. So a y equals x cubed graph looks like this dotted line here. It doesn't actually have any humps. It's got what you might call a point of inflection, but I wouldn't worry about that word because it's not a core one, module core one word that you need to know for now. You will need to know in core two, though. Um, anyway, so that's a point of inflection. It kind of flattens out and goes up again. Uh, so these are two points of, or turning points or vertices, but you just need to know the word vertex or vertices at the moment. And there isn't much more to say about cubic graphs. So let's finally move on to uh, reciprocal graphs. Reciprocal, let's look at that word, reciprocal. Let's zoom in so you can see. Uh, here we go. This is the description of a reciprocal graph. It has something we call an asymptote. Okay, let's show you what an asymptote is. Well, I'm going to show you two asymptotes. Uh, the first asymptote I'm going to show you is this line, which is at the moment is the x axis. Okay, this curve. The graph of y equals k over x is getting closer and closer to the x-axis but never reaches there. That makes the x-axis an asymptote to this curve, this line, this equa the equation, the graph of this equation or this reciprocal graph. Okay, you might think that this is a different graph but actually this one equation produces both of these lines. Okay, another asymptote to this line is the y-axis. So this graph gets closer and closer to the y-axis but never reaches there. I would advise you to try to make this graph. So pick a number for k, let's say 1 is a nice number to start off with. So draw, try to draw the graph of y equals 1 over x. Uh, plot a number of x values, I would suggest fraction values for x as well, as well as whole values. So start with, say, x equals one third, then one half, maybe a quarter, then one, two, three, four, etc. And hopefully you appreciate why the graph gets closer and closer to the y y axis, but never quite gets there. Um, in a similar way, this is the other part of the same graph. It gets closer and closer to the y-axis, but never touches it. It goes to negative infinity, uh, whereas this part of the graph goes up to positive infinity, and this part of the graph goes to negative infinity on the x-axis, whereas this goes to positive infinity on the x-axis. Uh, so you can see the shape of these two parts are say, the same. Um, if you spin them around, rotate them, you'll see that they are exactly the same. And uh, that's what you need to know about asymptotes in this graph. Now, there are all sorts of variations of all three of these graphs. Let's zoom out again. So, all three of these graphs, there are variations of them, and I will talk about that as part of this sketching graphs uh, series of videos. Okay, so but you need to know a fair amount more about these graphs, about how or how you find out where they cross the axes. That's also about sketching graphs. That's part of defin the definition of how you sketch a graph. You need to know where it cuts the axes, where the asymptotes, etc., are. So that will be on my next few videos on sketching graphs.